For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. What's been going on? What's been going on? I've been to hospital. I was rushed to hospital, right, emergency and that. Had a uh, tube put up my knob. You had a tube put up your knob? Yeah. What was the story? Uh, kidney stones. Oof. So, shouldn't really be here, to be honest, doing this. He said rest and that. Climbing them stairs on the way in. To be quite honest, it doesn't look like you're expending a lot of energy at the moment. It's, it's like at Zoo Keeper going, all oh, that slow move today. Calm down. Yeah, but I had to get here. It's been raining. Yeah. I had to come up the stairs. I had to carry the computer. Yeah. Well, that's not entirely true because your girlfriend was carrying it. I saw her outside. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying. And, oh. then you, and then you handed it to me and said, Steve, God carry this. God almighty. So. Yeah, I know. That's already a lie. Christ almighty. Whinging. Not whinging. I'm in show business. I know loads of people that wake up every day with a sore knob, feeling like they've had their kidneys probed. And they, they, you know, they would say they're unconscious. So they yeah. don't whinge about it. They get straight back onto it. They, you know, <laughs> a lot of them are on TV now. Yeah, straight back to hosting game shows. <laughs> <laughs> so you rushed to hospital. So tell the, take us through the take us through the events because it does sound quite dramatic. You started feeling a bit of pain, did you initially? I felt a bit of pain, and I thought, you know, yeah, maybe I just pulled a muscle or something when I've been. Wrestling with Ricky and that, because mm. you don't know what damage is being done. <laughs> uh, so I just think, oh, it'll go in a minute, and then it didn't. It got a bit badder. It did. did it got badder, did it? So then got I thought, I, I, oh, I, I was, I was crippled. I was lying on the floor in agony, looking on the internet, looking for a sort of. Still solutions. looking at monkey news. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just, I just put in like belly ache and stuff, and they were saying me loads of different things, um, and I. What I used to do when I was a kid, I used to always just get a cold ashtray and put that on my belly. And the coldness used to get rid of the badness. <laughs> Amazing. The coldness got rid of it. Like a witch doctor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, this, this is like... A witch doctor who happens to work in a pub. It's like a, some sort of fifth century remedy <laughs> yeah. written in mud. <laughs> yeah. Coldness doth get away with the badness. <laughs> yeah. uh, why, why specifically an ashtray? Just because they were they sort of old cold. <laughs> They're old cold. I don't know what this is. I, mean, it's, I love this idea that he's, he, uh, he's uh, had the operation and he comes round and they're talking to him and uh, his, his girlfriend gets a phone call and, go, and, and they say, uh, Mr Pilkerton's it's got maybe complications, he's just talking rubbish. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. goes, oh, good. Yeah, he's back to his old self. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, 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 is it, why specifically an ashtray? Sorry, because it's old cold. I understand it's old it's, cold. Oh, yeah, we understand. We, every, <laughs> yeah. Everyone who's done a medical degree understands old cold. But, <laughs> but uh... <laughs> old, yeah. old cold belly badness. <laughs> if you want to buy that book, Old Cold Belly Badness, it's uh, uh, the, yeah. the History of Abdominal Surgery by Carl Pilkington. No, it just... You know, if, so, if but you, you put it in the freezer or something first. You can do if you want, but they're normally cold anyway. <laughs> sort of thick glass and that holds the cold. But we're not smoking our house, so I had to use a plate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's madness. A plate's not going to work. A pla Famously, a, pla a plate oh doesn't God, work. Oh, God, no. Oh, God. So you put, a, a, uh, you put a plate on your belly, but that didn't yeah, do any no, work. That, that didn't yeah. work. So I uh, called Suzanne and said, oh, I'm in agony here. She said, go to the doctor's then. Good advice. So a lot of people have done that straight away, as opposed <laughs> to going through the plate <laughs> ashtray. <laughs> so he went to hospital, and he went to hospital. And he said, "Have you got an ashtray?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. They went no, no, ashtray. This is no smoking. <laughs> so anyway, so then we get in a cab and what have you? Go there. I have an X-ray. His voice is even more boring than usual. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah. Fuck me. And they put me on a drip and everything. Give me some morphine and stuff and found out that I had kidney stones. So that's why I was in hospital. And they get them out by... I can't even... I don't know what's gone on, to be honest. Oh, I've on. got some tube inside me, from my kidney to my bladder. That's helping me stuff get about. 
Right. And so there's a little tube up the end of your knob into your... Yeah, it's not there now. It's right. It's high up. Right. So it's high up between my kidney and my bladder. But why didn't you have the thing where they go in the side? You had the choice to... Because I said to the doctor, I said, I'm not a doctor. I said, what do you <laughs> he think? He went, stop putting yourself <laughs> down, <laughs> yeah. Carl. He said, we need you in the operating yeah. theatre now. He just said, you know, I said to him, what, what should I have done? Because he said, if you want, go home um, and we'll get you in again or something. Uh, something like that. And I said, no, I might as well have it done properly. Have it done now whilst I'm here. Sorry, the choice was have it done properly or go home? It was It was something like that. He said, he said there's, there's something you can do. And I said, oh... Flush it out? Um, no, because it's too big. It's something like seven millimetres. And it was, it's basically because you don't drink enough water. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, I said, what do you think I should have done? And he said, chip up the knob. And I said, mm, not my favourite one of the choice, but if, you, if that's what you think. So he said, yeah, have that. He did me little diagrams, which didn't help. He was, like, showing... <laughs> How big like, did he draw your knob? Uh, sort of <laughs> normal size. Yeah, was yeah, it? It was all right. You weren't offended by uh, them? Well, he wanted into detail. It's just, you know, more the tube and stuff in your yeah. bladder and your kidney. What was your ball bag like? Did he draw that? He didn't did... do that bit. He left that bit out. OK, right. But, um, but he <laughs> said, oh, we'll just pop that up there. And, uh, and then that's when Ricky turned up to visit. Yeah, came in laughing at me because we sat there in like me underpants and stockings. <laughs> in stockings? Yeah. Yeah. Why were you dressed He was there. Him? No, he wasn't in bed. He was sort of out of bed with his little drip, right? He had his little boxer shorts on, just sat there, right, in his pants, right? And he had stockings on. Yeah, because they stop clots or something. They put them on your legs. It's like, you know, when people have got big veins and they go on a plane. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. You said you're not a doctor. <laughs> no, but I've, I've seen it, because Suzanne's man did it, and it was she put them on ridiculously early, like three days before we were going away. And <laughs> she'd, she'd never been away before, and it, everything was, like, over the top. Do you know what I mean? She was like, I best put them on. And, uh, so, so I put them on, and they, like... I don't know what it is. It's something when you're in... When you're under, your blood doesn't move about the same. Right. And it can clot up in your leg. So you wear these tight tights. And I came in to cheer him up, didn't I? Yeah. Was that a nice cheery experience, him coming in? Uh, I had a headache at the time. I think it was a bit stressed out. <laughs> well, he's uh, just a man you want at that, at that point. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it's weird how it suddenly all happened quick. And uh, I woke up and there was an Irish woman over me going, are you all right? Are you all right? And I said, oh, it's stinging a bit. She said, I'll give you some more morphine. And I sort of put my head up to have a look at my tackle because I wanted to see... If it was still there. ...what, what was attached to it. Do you know what I mean? Because they said something about they might leave some string hanging out of it so they can pull the tube out. It makes you talk. So, uh, <laughs> so I, had a, I had a look for that, couldn't, couldn't see any of that. Yeah. Uh, but as you put the morphine in, all the muscles in your body go funny. My head just collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. I'm in agony now, and... Uh, Are you in agony right now as we speak? Yeah, certain. Uh, but it does make you think now, do you know what I mean? Like, life and everything. I mean, it's weird how it's all happened in the last month from seeing that bee sort of die. No, no, <laughs> not really. no, you, no, 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 no. This is not a near-death experience. It is you a had a routine bit. operation to remove kidney stones because you don't drink enough water. No, I know, but... This what? is not a shark attack. Yeah, but it's all it's all uh, life-threatening, otherwise you wouldn't have to fill out forms, would you, saying if everything goes wrong, Suzanne can have the house or whatever. They keep taking your heartbeats and stuff, mm. and your blood pressure. I don't like knowing about that. I just, like, leave it. It's happening. Don't be messing with it. Stop measuring it. <laughs> Stop measuring it! No, do you know what I mean? Is that the same no, with the it's, knob? It's, it's that thing of, of like, <laughs> they put that thing That's on. what the anaesthetist was doing when you were under, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. He was comparing the diagram to the actual thing. Oh, God. What is the closest thing, t sort of living, that's nothing? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what? What's, like, the closest... Like, do you know, at some point, something's gone from nothing to something, hasn't it? No, I don't... No, I don't understand what you mean. Do you mean what is the, the, the first and lowest and most primitive and most simple form of life? No, He's so, right here in this room. Right? <laughs> say, say, like, when you look at a, a stick insect... Right. ..you go, right, there's a slight crossover there from a stick to a living thing. No, it's not. It didn't used to be a no, stick. No, 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 it's not. There's no, there's no, there's no biological relationship between it and a stick. But the, there isn't much difference between the two, is what I mean. Of course there is. It's a huge there isn't. Difference. They just, they just sit there looking like a stick. That's their skill. 
Yes, but there's nothing to do with being a stick. It's it's like camouflage. That's like saying when a soldier puts on combat gear, you get, you're saying he's a cross between a human and a shrub. <laughs> what I'm saying is, have you seen them weird things that just look like... They, they, they sort of look like a leaf. Yeah, they're insects that that, that, that have evolved to look like a leaf. At some it. point, something has had it away with a leaf. No! What? At no point has something had it away with a leaf. No, to make it look that much like no. a leaf. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> At no point did a beetle shag a leaf. It's superficial. It's the way it looks. That's all it... it that's like saying chameleons must have mated with green once. They are green. No, but it what, looks like a leaf. But then, how does it meet? How does it have relationships? It will be going around, sort of having it away with a leaf. <laughs> no, it won't, because it doesn't know what it looks like. It doesn't matter. It's not like they, uh, it, 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 you know, um, a stick insect. Let me talk it to a stick for ages and go. Oh, I've wasted my time here. <laughs> this club's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. I was chatting to her. She was foxy, but she was giving me nothing. But Dave, that's that's not a stick insect. That's a stick. What? What are you talking about? That's a stick. You've been talking to a stick all night. I, thought, oh, I can't believe it. I just thought she had a great, slim figure. No, no, it's actually a real stick. Well, I've been watching birds more than insects recently. Oh, in the, OK, in you've moved last, on from In insect. the last week, just because so, I've sort of looked at the ant and the bee and that. And what I've found with pigeons is they've got wings, yet they walk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'd love that to be a thesis, where he got, like, a, a half a million pounds grant from a university... And I said, well, Pilkin doesn't seem to... He's done ants and he's done bees. Um, he's, he's followed ants. <laughs> Apparently, they're not doing anything. Some of them are lazy. Um, he will grant him another uh, half a million pounds. Um, he's been working on it for a year. Um, please welcome Carl Pilkinson. <laughs> Carl, what have you found? Well, even though pigeons have wings, they walk a lot. Well, I heard... Uh, and you told me this, so I know it's true. What? Do you know when I talked about replacing blood with coconut? Uh, coconut, what was it? Well, one, it, it said uh, um, coconut milk can be used uh, as as plasma, but yeah. I haven't had that verified because it's off one of those websites where there are spurious facts. Well, uh, what do you think of that, Steve? I mean, I've sort well, of touched on it. But I've just got to echo what Ricky said. I, I can't have an opinion unless it's been verified. But why, why aren't you just being open-minded enough to go, well... Uh, well no, 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 but that's, that's not, not being open-minded. Open-minded open isn't uh, believing everything you hear. You don't believe everything you read, do you? Um, a lot of it, a lot of stuff you kind of go, well, that's, that's interesting to... But what, we talked about this, what about Noah's Ark? What about it? Well, you know, you said you believed it because it's in book form. But uh, according to that, uh, didn't he get two of every species on a big boat? But... but we know that's impossible, don't we? Um, depends where he was. If he was above a zoo, there would have been a lot of different stuff knocking about. That's my only problem. What I'm saying is, where was he floating where he could get an elephant, a giraffe, a cat, a dog, a gerbil? Where were all these things floating about? Well, exactly. Right, that's, these, that's these Old Testament downfall. zoos, they were quite... Yeah, yeah quite but big, exactly, really. but, you're, but you're, you're right, you're questioning it. Look, look, look. How is it possible? But I've just said, a zoo. There's no zoo that has got 1% of all animal species. Well, I don't know where he got them from, then. There's a couple of million species of animal. And how did he round these animals up? Because they were drowning, so they were, they were looking for any boat. So they were looking, they were actively seeking out an ark. Well, they, they would have just been looking for anything to get hold of. Yeah, and where did he keep them all? How did he keep them all separate? How did he... At that point... Oh, you... no, the uh, lion's at the otter. No, because at that point, it's, it's that thing, in it of how you all pull together in, it, in a bad situation. talk shit. You all chip in, they're all like, oh, God, you know, let's be nice to our neighbours. Right, so there's spiders talking to flies and... Well, they, they would have just gone elsewhere, wouldn't they? They would have been on another bit of the boat. The spiders don't have to knock about with the lions just because they're all in it together. They get their own little area, don't they? Well, I don't know. How big is this boat? How it's big? big, it's big, it's a big boat. Uh, how long, what was the warning he got from God to make it? I don't know. It was a couple of weeks. Yeah. Two, two of every species, Carl. How big would this boat have to be? Yeah, it's big. You can't just keep saying it's big. Because I know in your mind, you're imagining this ark, there's a boat with Noah up the front with his wife, two giraffes behind him, they're next there, two yeah. elephants, and it just and, and it's just like it's just like elephant, giraffe, hippo, dog, cat, weasel, couple of frogs, and a spider talking to a fly going, yeah. let's get on. But when we're off here, you're dead. But what would you have done then? 
Would you? Are you saying that you won't get on there because it's too noisy? It's not a question it's of not, what it didn't happen. Done. It didn't happen. To be honest, I'm not bothered. And they got through it, didn't they? <laughs> they got through it. They're here now. We're not short of them. If anything, like I said, he didn't do us a favour because he saved too much. You can't move out there for stuff. <laughs> That's the jiggle for uh, excerpts from Carl's diary. This is all uh, legitimate stuff. Ricky and I have had no input in this. This is the first time we get to read it. Went and did some shopping for stuff as it was my turn. Suzanne moaned a bit because I forgot orange juice and bought some cheap toilet paper. She always buys the expensive toilet paper. I don't know why they make toilet paper with pretty patterns on it. <laughs> that made it into the diary. <laughs> Uh, up and out at nine o'clock to go to the Cotswolds. Now, I think this was a gift for your girlfriend, wasn't it? For her yeah, birthday, it was you a went birthday to the Cotswolds. Yeah. So I just went for one night. Got the car and headed off. We found the B&B, but they wouldn't let us in the room because we were early. We went for a walk. <laughs> there was not much around the B&B, so we had a quick walk around the car park <laughs> <laughs> and went back in. Happy birthday. <laughs> The room was now ready. It's an all right room. Free biscuits, so I ate them straight away. <laughs> like a child. Like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> he runs in, jumps on the bed. No, no, no. Oh, 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 oh. Get off the bed, not on the furniture. <laughs> the room overlooked the car park that we'd already been round. <laughs> <laughs> You're staring at that window. Remember when we went there? <laughs> We'd always have the car park. Yeah. Oh, God. The room had posh coat hangers in the wardrobe with sponge on them. <laughs> so I ate the sponge. <laughs> Don't think they are needed. <laughs> we went and booked a table for Sunday dinner. I had beef. It was nice enough, but there was a family of 13 behind us. I don't see the point in going out in large numbers. They annoyed me. One of the family asked for sorbet before his next course. He was only about 11. He thought he was it. <laughs> <laughs> I said to Suzanne, I've had enough and needed a kip. Watch Planet Earth on BBC One. They filmed a panda for four weeks and all it did was sit in its cave. It did not. If I was Fiat, I wouldn't name one of my cars after them as it suggests it won't work or go very far. It'd be like bringing out a Ford Sloth. No one would buy it. <laughs> a Ford Sloth! I would love that ad campaign! Oh, that's amazing! Oh, God! The new Vauxhall Slug! <laughs> <laughs> we had a look around the local village. There wasn't much to it. We did the usual thing and had a look around the church graveyard to see how old the dead people are. <laughs> so Su Suzanne's at the end of the time so far. She's gone to the Cotswolds, the room wasn't ready, she's seen the car park, and they'll just go and play how old the dead people are. Well, I like the fact that you mentioned we did the usual thing of having a look around the church graveyard. Do you make her do that's that every time you, you go away? I like nothing. the fact, I want to know what she did for two hours when you slept. She just looked out at the car park, just like, memories. <laughs> but well, that's, that's what you do, though, isn't it, when you go to these places? There's nothing else, unless you want fudge. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you walk around the church graveyard and, <laughs> and have a look. Like it's nothing. Fudge. We went home. It took three hours to drive back. People say they go to the country to see the wildlife. I saw rabbits, pheasants and a fox on the way home. They were all dead in the road. <laughs> Talking, I was just intrigued to know because Rob from Burton on Trent uh, has sent this in and he wants to know that because he's just started seeing someone and he wants to know what your advice, Carl, is on how to keep her happy. So, what's your sort of your advice really for someone who's perhaps just started a relationship? I, don't, I, I mean, you've been with Suzanne for what nine years? Ages. Mm -hmm. I think you should just do what you want and then if they like it, then they're the right ones for you. Mm -hmm. So, don't, don't go out of your way too much. I mean, I got the posh badge for a birthday, mm -hmm. uh, that's once a year. Uh, rest of the time it's kind of like you know I, I i like weird stuff i like watching weird stuff and all that um now and again i won't make her watch it i'll, I'll tape it <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing advice but sometimes this is amazing advice sometimes you just say no come on the bloke with the two heads on i want to watch it live uh, <laughs> so give and take is what you're saying there that's all it's, it's, it shouldn't be hard as soon as it's hard it's not right so just uh just go about your business, see if she joins in.
woke up to the Commonwealth Games on the radio. Now, what are you making of the Commonwealth Games? Is that something that interests you? Are you a sports fan? Um, I, I'm not really. It just seems to be sort of wasted. If people are running fast, use it. Do you know what I mean? Rather than just try to beat your own record or someone else's, do something where you do have to run. If you're a good swimmer, be a lifeguard. Don't be messing about going up and down. I was swimming recently, I do a lot of swimming, and I've never quite mastered my front crawl. Just never quite nailed the breathing, because it's quite tricky, isn't it? You know, you've well, yeah. got to breathe at the right moment. And um, so I'm in the swimming pool in the local gym, and there's a guy bombing up and down, really doing a great forward stroke. So I uh, waited till he came up, and sort of went, uh, <laughs> excuse me, mate. Um, <clears throat> I was just watching you when you were doing your front crawl. I was really impressed. Could you just watch me? When I do mine, and tell me if I'm going wrong. Why would you go to a man? I know, and that was what I. Th that was the problem. Is only as I was saying it did I realise what it sounded like. I've just been watching you yeah. swimming up and down. I was really and, impressed. And you're both in speedos. <laughs> both in speedos. You know, I'm. I'm got the goggles on, um, prescription goggles, so I can see when I'm, when I'm swimming. But why do you need them? There's nothing in a pool to look at. It's not like you're scuba diving. There's well, nothing. Hold just... on. Clearly, there is something to look at in a pool. Well, no, I wasn't. I wasn't checking. Well, I was checking him out, but I was checking him out for for swimming tips. And he just looked at me when I asked him, "Can you just watch me and offer me any tips?" And he just Steve, looked at me like I was just that's, mental. That is a, such a strange thing to say. Can you just watch? Me? I don't know how you had the nerve to do that. Well, I, it was innocently motivated. Well, I know it's innocent, but what a strange thing to go up to someone. And but what with the civilization we live in, where we can't just ask our fellow man to help us out with our forward crawl. But we're in a society where we can't. But you know that. It's a strange thing to say. But, I, but sometimes it's nice to just think, no, do you know what? I'm not going to fall into the trap of I thinking agree. he's immediately going to think I'm gay or but that I'm chatting him up. I'm just going to ask him to do me a favour. There's nothing wrong with that. What if he said, yeah, it's just good, yeah. Um, do you mind coming up me with um, my plastering? But it's not the same. He's in the swimming pool. He's yeah. there in the pool. He's swimming up and down. He's, you know, mm. he's, it's not no skin off his nose to just offer a bit of kind advice. If your car's broken down in the, in the middle of nowhere and someone drives by, you know, it's a generous thing to do. Just stop and maybe look under the bonnet and help them out. I agree. But I don't see how it's any different. And in the end, he did. And all he asked was that I wake him off. <laughs> <laughs>